this is the historical function of the piano in a rhythm section, in a dance band, in a show band, in a polka band, in the early days of jazz kind of band. Umpah, pure and simple. The left hand would be doubling with a tuba or a bass player. Right hand would be doubling with a banjo. The drummer would be going through with what drummers do. Sometimes in the 1920s, the pianist, for a tempo slower than this, would be playing this sort of thing. 4-4 four, four in the right hand, 2 in the left. That's the way they were actually published in some of the old dance band arrangements of that time. But, of course, uh, jazz suggests that things be loosened up and that individual players be given opportunities to change things around. So <clears throat> the uh, pianist very often would uh, perhaps keep this stuff going with the left hand with the rhythm section, but in the right hand put in some doodles. Very much like he would do if he were playing solo piano altogether. But you have the option of dropping out and returning to the rhythm section, maybe doing the doodles for points of heightened excitement. Then the pianist might not play in rhythm all the time. He might do tenor melodies. Say the horn was playing, and by the way, the name of this tune is Indiana. All in the interests of keeping the thing going and building up the excitement in an ensemble. All the horns playing together, contrapuntally, the pianist doing his bit. The bass player would play along very often in two beat in the early days, and then walking around in four, he might or might not always be coinciding correctly with the pianist's left hand. In those days, bass players were playing acoustically, couldn't hear them anyhow. And since the uh, recordings weren't of much higher technology either, the entire band would drop out for the piano solo. I suppose that an arrangement goes piano only. And everybody would come back in again after 16 or 32 bars. Old records actually were made that way.